Hello, Luther Memorial and all of our friends. We're starting a new series today to get to share with all of you the faith, faith of our members, the faith of our friends. You've gotten to hear from me these last weeks, and I thought what a wonderful idea it would be to ask families amongst us what they're going through, how their faith has been changed, or how it's even testing them as well, too. So we're so blessed to get to have the Wallman family with us, and they're going to share in about five or six questions, and I just commend you to listen to them with an encouragement, support, and love, but also a gift of you realizing, too, that lots of us are going through the same things in these days. So let's begin with prayer, and then we'll get to interview the Wallman family. Dear God, we thank you for the ways that you have been so faithful to us in these last weeks. Thank you, God, for being with us through the disappointments, the losses, even the joys that have come unexpectedly. We pray, Lord, that now you bless this time as the Wallman family shares with us. Bless their conversation, the ways that they inspire, encourage, or just even normalize us by hearing the gift of what others are going through. Thank you for the gift of their time, and bless us as we get to hear them talk on this Friday Faith Talk. In your name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to have the Wallman family introduce themselves to you. Hi, um, I'm Megan Wallman, and I'm a senior at Syracuse High School this year. I'm Mom Jackie, and I'm a mortgage loan officer here in town at First Bank. Dad Chris, I guess we're doing Dad Chris, and <laughs> uh, I have a construction company in town. Son Ethan, um, and it is my third year in college. And it's obvious they're all related to each other as one family unit. So thanks, Walmans. I'm going to start with our first question, going to Ethan. And Ethan, I want to ask you, how has your faith been strengthened in these last weeks? Well, I have uh, kind of been reading some of the Bible, particularly Revelations, and it kind of made me realize, you know, things are not very good right now, but... In the end, they, they will be fine. So, And if they're not, then it's not the end yet. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anything in particular, Ethan, about what you've read that's reminded you that in the end they will turn out? Um, kind of the uh, whole war where Jesus comes down, you know, and saves the earth. So, Amen. Excellent. Thanks, Ethan. And now I want to turn to Sister Megan <laughs> and have her answer this question. What have been the biggest challenges for you and your family in these last weeks? Um, for my family, definitely the biggest challenge has probably been me and my attitude lately. Um, but for me, obviously, senior year, um, that's kind of what everybody hypes up in high school and not getting that final closure with my classmates or knowing when our last day of school was, no prom, no graduation. That's kind of been challenging to grasp in my mind and kind of just the idea that it's over and we won't ever get that. Mm. Megan, it might be too soon to ask, so you can tell me if it is, but are there any ways that we as your community and church family can encourage you in these days? Um, I would just say support any senior you see. Obviously, everybody's going through a rough time, but it's kind of the uncertainty as we go forward, especially if we plan to move into college in the fall or where, wherever we're going to go. So hug your seniors. Thanks, Megan. We're going to turn to Dad Chris now. And Chris, um, I know you have grown up in this church and is such a faithful member with your family. So I know Holy Week and Easter was very different this year. So I'm going to ask, how was Holy Week and Easter different for you and your family this year? What did you miss the most? What touched you the most? All right, I'm going to step back for a second on Megan's, how to encourage seniors and everything. If anybody could just post memories of any senior. It doesn't have to be your kid, whatever. 
just throw that out there. Fond memories of any senior this year. Put it out there on Facebook. I think they would like to see that versus posting a picture of your senior year. I, I don't <laughs> know how that helps, but people do that, and that's fine. But anyway, as far as Easter went this year, yeah, it was different. Um, unique. Went out to the drive-in celebration, picked up my mom and went out there and did that, and then um, we had a very small breakfast. Um, usually, every Easter, I, I have a very big family. Um, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, everybody gets together. My mom loves to make it a huge, huge deal. Scavenger hunt, Easter egg, the whole nine yards. Um, Ethan and Megan always team up with some of the other younger nieces and nephews, and they do their scavenger hunt and everything that that you know, it didn't obviously didn't happen this year. Um, just getting that in touch with them. Um, we have Easter out at her house. It, it, I'm to be honest, every year it sometimes it seemed like a hassle because <laughs> both grandmas wanted you to be here, and then one would say, "Well, they did lunch last year." And then, well, no, they did this that last year, and then. It, <laughs> And then, yeah, I know people are going to be watching, but it, it happens every year. <laughs> and then we have to calm the tide and say, okay, it's going to be okay. We'll just. But this year, you know, we didn't have that because we couldn't have that. Um, there weren't any arguments about, well, we're going to do lunch here and we're going to do supper there. And we got to focus a little bit more on Jesus. And then yeah. we, we got to spend time at home all day Sunday as a family and, and focus on us and ourselves. So it was different, but. Yeah, you still miss that connection with your family um, because they just weren't there. They couldn't be there. They, it, it just wasn't going to happen. And but in the end, it was a nice. It was it was a wonderful Easter. It was calm, quiet, relaxing. But you still miss that family connection. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. We're going to turn to Mom Jackie now. So, Jackie, I want to ask you. What or who are you praying for or about in these weeks? I'm praying for a lot of people, but something that's a little unique about us is when Megan was born, we were on quarantine for two years, and so um, bringing back a lot of interesting memories and a lot of interesting habits and hand washing and um, antibacterial wipes everywhere. But from that time, it reminded me to take more time and pray. Pray for our family, pray for the community, pray for our nation. And it, good and bad, has brought back a lot of a lot of different things, but definitely praying for our family, praying a lot for Ethan and Megan and that school will be okay and they can still see their friends and do the things that kids just really want to do. And then, of okay. course, praying that everyone is healthy in our family, our community, nation, and the world, and hoping this virus will just pass. And yes, there's going to be some hardships, but also maybe leaving some kindness and some goodness after this is all complete. Thanks, Jackie. We're going to go back to you, Megan. And this one, what a one to ask you on this day. You found out about graduation. If God is teaching you any new lessons through all of this, what is that lesson that you think God's teaching you, Megan? Yeah, so... Um, this is kind of a good one that I didn't really realize. Um, I ordered a new book. It's called It's Not Supposed to Be This Way. And kind of one of the main things it focuses on is kind of getting through disappointments when you don't really know what to do and finding God in that aspect of your life. Um, so one of the main things is hurt can't hurry up. Um, and it's true. We all need time to grieve this time, especially like I'm going to preach about our senior class again. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to grieve. Eat as much ice cream as you want. Um, that's kind of a good lesson to live by, especially today with no graduation, finding that out and kind of living that through with the rest of my class and everything. And it, of course, that also impacts our community as a whole, too. Mm. Thanks for that lesson, Megan. Just one last thought for you, Walmans. Do you have any last thoughts or um, questions or prayers that you would like for people to pray for you? Any last things you want to share? Pray for a graduation ceremony. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we too, Megan, as I shared with all of you on texting too, if that doesn't get to be 
we'll do baccalaureate, even if it needs to be in the parking lot with everybody stretched out. So we'll celebrate youth in any way we can. Well, thank you, Walman family, for joining us and for being with us in our Friday Faith Talk. We'll continue to have families with us every week, and we'll air them on Friday on both youth you, uh, YouTube and on Facebook as well, too. And if you would like to share, just let me know as you can. But may God bless you and hold you. May God lead you and guide you. And most of all, may God be present with you wherever you're at, whatever you're feeling, and wherever your faith is. Amen. Thanks for joining us, everyone.